Good afternoon. Welcome to Midday Prayer. Um, I'm going to check to see if I'm up here. We'll begin in a minute. Okay. Good afternoon, Lynn. Peace, love, and healing. Okay, so today um, I'm going to start on a meditation by Richard Rohr. Um, he has these daily meditations, and today's uh, meditation was very beautiful and what I what I needed to hear, so I'm hoping that it will resonate with some of you. Um, I am putting the link in the comments. It will show up eventually, I hope. There we go. And I'll put it up here. For those um, of us who might show up a bit later, um, this is where you can find it. Um, or you can just Google search Richard Rohr uh, Daily Meditations and it'll show up. But this is where um, you can receive it. Okay? All right, I'll keep it up as I read. I'm just going to move my computer slightly closer. There you go. All right. So for today's uh, meditation, uh, it's entitled A Friendship with Jesus. And he starts off with um, the scripture reading from John chapter 15, thir 13 to 14. And it says, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. And he continues. When we, retreat, when we treat Jesus as a friend, it's easy to focus on how the relationship benefits us and relieves our, our burdens. But Professor Dana L. Robert reminds us that there is more to friendship with Jesus than the blessings we receive. Knowing Jesus as a friend is a source of strength that impacts all our relationships in community and society, she writes. Um, in society, she writes. Knowing Jesus is a relationship so intimate that he carries his followers' burdens. He brings them joy. He walks beside them. In short, Jesus befriends those who follow him. And friendship with Jesus builds Christian community across cultural, social, and ethnic divisions. In 1993, the Reverend Dr. Margaret Moshu, Moshushu Manjan was an Anglican chaplain at the huge Baragwanath Hospital in the South African township of Soweto. She was a former student of mine and I was scheduled to go visit her. Then on April 10th, a right wing nationalist murdered the head of the South African Communist Party, Chris Hani, in his driveway. Immediately, riots broke out throughout the country especially in Soweto. South Africa was a powder keg and Nelson Mandela could barely keep the lid on. Angry young men surged into Barakwanath Beric Hospital with their injured comrades. Margaret used all her authority to avert rioting in the hospital, ordering the rioters to sit down and treat the hospital with respect. When we spoke on the phone before my scheduled visit, I asked her how she was managing. She answered, without Jesus, I couldn't get through the day. Her friendship with Jesus helped her support the community through crisis. In most cultures, the idea of friendship is a powerful statement of relational identity. In Batak culture in Indonesia, for example, 
It is said that the loss of a friend is worse than the loss of one's mother. Traditional Russian culture assumes it is better to have many friends than much money. In Confucian tradition, friendship is one of the basic relationships that undergirds society. For American Christians, being friends with Jesus tends to be personal. Jesus is my friend. He carries my burdens. But a cross-cultural perspective on Jesus as friend says a lot about the meaning of community. For friendship always goes both ways. It requires mutuality. It involves give and take. Since Jesus is holding hands with the world, so to speak, then intimacy with Jesus extends far beyond personal needs. To befriend Jesus means carrying and fellowship the responsibilities of friendship that he carried. In the context of worldwide community, being friends with Jesus is hard work. For when followers of Jesus walk beside him, he leads them in direction that would they would rather not go, into neighborhoods they would rather avoid, and to meet other friends of his they might not normally know. As the scriptures and history show to be a friend of Jesus means loving others just as he does. So if you wanna go back and read that again, feel free to. Um, but one of the things that really stuck out to me, honestly, um, is what um, Richard Rohr is trying to share with us about friendship and what it means to say that we are friends with Jesus beyond the personal aspects of it, beyond what Jesus does for us and in our lives um, and how that friendship, that mutuality of friendship also means that it is extended into the world. It ex it's, we are called to do more than just have a personal relationship with Jesus. Um, and I appreciated the, the story from South Africa and how um, this idea that it is by our friendship with Jesus who walks with us that we are able then to use that friendship to bring peace um, and to maybe quail or offer a different way um, and to also work through what is a very hard circumstance um, and how that is also a part of what it means for us to be followers of Christ, right? That Jesus is with us and helps us get through what are the hard places and hard times in our lives. And I'm especially keen and aware um, of where we are right now um, <laughs> and where we have been, right? Um, being in a pandemic, slowly getting through said pandemic, <laughs> being vaccinated, um, the vaccines that are happening, but also that still not everybody is, you know, the majority of the country is not um, in the world. And then <laughs> how that is compounded with our, our social issues that by all means have, are not new, um, but it just feels like in some ways, right? Um, in some ways, that there's no room for a break or a breath <laughs> in the combination of all of the struggles that have been going on um, for a while now. So, and I'm especially pointing out what's happening right now in Minneapolis um, and how I would like for the collective prayer to go there, for there to be a breath available for the family of Dante Wright, 
for those who are frustrated and angry about injustice, for those who are struggling with the realities um, of what is happening, um, as well as for the trial um, that's going on. And while that is one police, I feel like it's showing a variety of circumstances <laughs> that, um, that are true in our, in our nation, but also in our world, right? And probably a reality that's that's there that has been there for for however long, right? But we are living in it right now. And so, as friends of Jesus, what are we called to do and be in this time? I guess is the question. I am not offering an answer. I'm just posing a question uh, for our time of prayer. I would like to. Uh, sing a song in the spirit of South Africa by um, with the words uh, of Arch, well, I guess he's not Archbishop, but Desmond Tutu um, and music by John Bell. I've sung this one before. It's goodness is stronger than evil. And I need to hear this, honestly. So I'm going to sing it. <laughs> Um, and I find these words to be more of a victorious song for those who are feeling, um, like evil is prevailing or that there's no justice or there's something missing. So we're going to start with that song and then we're going to end with a, uh, prayer in this book that I've been sharing with you all. Um, a rhythm of prayer, and it's more like a benediction. So we're going to end on a blessing, a benediction, um, which is a prayer. So there, that will be the order of the rest of this. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So we'll start off with Desmond. Well, we'll start off with the song, Goodness is Stronger Than Evil. All right. Let us breathe together first. <laughs> all right. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours. Victory is ours through God who loves. Us. Victory is ours, victory is ours through God who loves us. Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Through God who loves us. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Through God who loves us. Mm-hmm. 
Let us pray. God of prayers for parking spots and prisons, of hospitals and holidays, of anger and angels, of traveling mercies and tired ones, of decolonization and deconstruction, of wilderness and wonder and wander, of feast and ferocity, of goodness and grief. We come to you today with our whole selves. God of our honest prayers, more honest silences, open our eyes to see and our ears to hear and our hearts to understand how you are already here with us. Mother God, gather us as a hen gathers her chicks and let us catch our breath for one hot second and remember how you hold the whole world in your kind, capable, wise hands, including us. Spirit, when we cannot part the weeds of our own traditions and our old languages, when the old pathways of prayer feel choked with briars and thorns, when you make a path in the wilderness for us to find you in new ways, new words, new practices, new permissions? Would you meet us in the wilderness and set out a feast? We are hungry and thirsty. We are grateful for mostly every moment that brought us here to you. Help us to sink down into your love, to push our roots down into that marvelous love and be planted within your power and grace as we practice loving this world as you have loved this world. May we laugh harder because we have learned to let ourselves weep with you. May we see and know and name beauty because we have learned to bring the ugliness to you. Surprise us and startle us. We're open to all the weird ways you want us to speak in us and to us and through us. May we be peacemakers, joy bringers, truth tellers, status quo disruptors, wanderers, wanderers, and misfits to our time because of resolute contentment who never settle for the sit down and shut up life, but rise up in your she who the sun sets free is free indeed, birthright of freedom. May we be the ones who come close to you because of our vulnerability and not because of our false certainties. Teach us to lay down our masks and pretenses. You tore down the veil between us and the holy of holies. Keep our hands from rehanging that curtain. Give us opportunities to practice mercy and courage. This may backfire, but we're feeling bold now. Call us to humility, confession and repentance, even when pride feels more comfortable and superior. Teach us how to rest, how to abide, and how to can light candles and be satisfied. Don't let us get away with divorcing our prayers from our politics and policies and practices. May we love our neighbors. May we learn to sit with you in silence and know it is enough to know you and be known by you and know ourselves. Teach us to pray, God, as you have always welcomed us to pray, fully human, fully yours, fully held, 
and fully loved. We will tell you the truth of our lives and of this world, and we will listen to the truth you speak back to us, the truth of our belovedness, of your justice, of your faithfulness, of love, and say, let it be so, let it be in me. Amen. Y'all have a good day. Peace.